Today we're going to be talking about how to change 3406 and C15 injectors. You can do this yourself if you're mechanically inclined and there's a couple not really specialty tools but you might have to be a little inventive on some of the uh, the tools we're going to use as far as cleaning out the injector bore, evac in the cylinder, uh, but it's not impossible. Um, if you have basically anything from the mid 90s to present cat 15 liter truck engines this video will be going over how to uh how to change the injectors on those if you have one of the older cats like a 3406a model or b model that has the mechanical fuel pump running off the front structure this video isn't going to show you how to do that uh, those systems are a lot different and uh, there's not a whole lot of those engines still out there uh, most of them are the style they have now with the electronic solenoid going to the injector and then with the rocker arm um, compressing the injector spring. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about this video or you weren't clear on something or you had another question, uh, you can leave them in the comments. I check the comments all the time and I'll respond back uh, usually within an hour. And uh, hope you like the video, thank you. here is a single turbo C15, a Kenworth. I'm going to be changing all the injectors, but I'll show you how to do one of them. So you're going to have to remove any intake tubing and the valve covers. Um, sometimes you have coolant hoses. Whatever's over the valve covers, you're going to have to remove and then the valve covers themselves. So I have removed the intake tubing and the valve covers, as you can see. So up here I'll be showing you how to do number one, although it's the same for all of them. So we have our intake injector there's your intake injector and exhaust rocker arms for number one cylinder. Uh, there's your solenoid for the injector and the injector itself under the rocker arm. Uh, you're going to have to remove the electric connector there. And you're going to have to remove these uh, bolts for the Jake housings. There's four and then there's a nut. Now depending on how old or newer the engine is, that system is going to be a little different. So, here is your... Uh, number one and number two cylinders looking from the rear. So that's number one, number two, and that's number one injector. So the one I'm going to be showing you how to change. And after you remove the bolts, you're going to remove your Jake housing. I always leave the bolts in, that way they don't go flying all over the place, and it helps to, uh, helps to line them when going back in too. Now your Jake housing might be different depending on which model C15 you have. Uh, it doesn't really matter there, you're going to have to remove it either way because you have to remove the rocker arms, which are underneath. So, uh, the rocker arms for 1 and 2 are linked with a cross shaft. So after you remove the bolts from them, you're going to have to pick them up. And Cat makes a tool for it, but you can do it with your hands. And uh, I do it with my hands anyways, I don't like the tool. Uh, make sure the bridges have separated from the intake and exhaust rocker arms because they tend to stick to them when you pick them up and they might you know fall down and you don't want that you want to stay on the valves so you just grab them kind of like uh, you're grabbing two crab claws basically they're pretty heavy like that and then I'll usually kind of flip them up let some of the oil drain off and then your rocker arms are removed so now you are ready to remove your injector uh, there's a single bolt holding the injector clamp down. Uh, these are 916's head, usually. And uh, they're torqued to about 40 foot-pounds, but I'll go over that later. You're going to remove the bolt, and um, Cat recommends not reusing the bolts. You should replace them with any Cat injector whenever you change the injector. Um, you know, that it's your truck. You don't have to necessarily, but Cat recommends it, and uh, they're pretty cheap. They're like a dollar. It's cheap insurance in case that bolt were to break. It would, you know, it could cause pretty severe engine damage. So I'm gonna remove our bolt. Oh, I'm gonna remove uh, number two bolt too because I'm doing all six in this, but I'm just gonna show you how to do uh, number one injector. So our bolt has been loosened. I'm going to take it out. There's a small, there's a uh, spacer on them, so be careful when you pull the bolt. Make sure you take the spacer as well. And then there's the injector hold down clamp. You're going to need a heel bar or an indexing heel bar. 
to remove that. And an indexing heel bar, GearWrench makes them. Uh, you can get them from Snap on Matco, Mac, whoever. And uh, if you've seen my C7 injector removal, it's the same. It's the same pry bar. And what it does, there it is. What it is is it's there's a ratchet mechanism, so you can move the head of the pry bar to where you want it. They're uh, they really make pulling these injectors a lot easier. If you don't have one, you can use a normal heel bar, and uh, these pop out pretty easy. You're just going to put it under the injector. Hold down clamp like that, and then you just pop it up. These are pretty easy to pop. And uh, I'm going to do number two as well while I'm at it. So the injectors now are unseated, so now you can just pull them out by hand. Um, make sure you grab the injector hold down clamp when you're pulling the injector, and then you can pull it off after you've got it past the valve springs. So there's your injector. Uh, you always want to check the O-rings, make sure they didn't fall or break into the injector bore. Like, this one is broken already, which probably means he was leaking a little bit of fuel into his cylinders when it sits overnight. Which he complained about black smoke, and uh, that's probably why. I'm going to check number two as well. Like I said, um, you know, you don't have to pull all the injectors. You just, if you're just changing one, you just pull the one you're changing, obviously. So number two, I'll, I'll usually flip them upside down like that and let them drain. Uh, back into the motor because if you pull them out right after pulling them, they're full of oil or not oil fuel and uh, You know, you don't want that going all over the floor and all over everything else. So I just let them drain there for a little bit And so they are pulled out so here we have the uh, Same shot. I've removed the injectors. I put them on a cart and uh, What you're gonna do now is you're gonna have to clean the injector bores um I use a solvent spray with brake wash. You can use um, you can use just solvent. Um, here's the injector bore looking down through it. What you're going to look for is any O-ring material, uh, thick carbon buildup. There's always going to be carbon on the bottom, and that's what you're going to have to clean out. Um, I just spray them out with this brake wash setup I have, and that works pretty well. I used to use a wire brush. However, um, I've had the wire bristles come off and sit in that injector bore, and you don't want that. You don't want those bristles, you don't want any metal or anything getting in that cylinder, because your combustion chamber is just below the injector bore there. And what you want to do is you just want to clean up any carbon residue, you know, any debris that pulling that injector has left in there. And um, so after I spray it out with that brake wash, that's all going to run into the cylinder. Now, you don't want fluids in the cylinder because when you go to start it, you don't want it to hydraulic, right? And uh, you're also changing the compression ratio by adding fluids to that cylinder. So that could damage the, um, you know, you could damage a valve. You could damage the uh, connecting rod, the starter when you go to start it if you don't get that fluid out of there. Now, the way I get it out of there is this. This is a uh, brake bleeder setup. And uh, what I do is I feed that little tube down the injector bore through the tip where the injector tip goes through into the cylinder. Now you don't have to use this setup. If you have like a little SOS gun or if you have even a wet dry vac with a bunch of little reducers, um, pretty much anything you could think of to suck that fluid out of that cylinder. Um, that's kind of the specialty tool I was talking about. Um, you might have to make something up if you're trying to do this. Or you can get this brake bleeder setup. It's only about I think they're about $100. Um, but like I said, you could use a wet dry vac too. Or even one of those uh, those kind of reverse uh, grease gun type suction guns. They're only about 10 bucks. And uh, so we have cleaned the cylinder and the injector bore. You want to inspect it. Make sure everything looks good. There's no carbon. There's no debris. And uh, looks pretty good. So here's your new injector as it comes out of the box. You have three O-rings, um, the red and the two blues. You're going to want to inspect those O-rings, make sure they're not damaged. And then you're going to want to, where it says file, you're going to write down that four-digit code. There might be a 12-digit code and a four-digit code if it's a newer injector. If there is, write both of those numbers down. Here's the injector I removed. You'll notice there's no seal on the bottom. Um, that's because that lower seal, the small blue one, actually 
burns up and turns to carbon as a carbon dam after it's been run for a little bit. So that's normal. So the, as you can see, I've already reinstalled uh, the number two injector. And here's your number one injector. So you're gonna make sure your seals are okay, they're in the right place, and they're not damaged. And then you're gonna lubricate them with, uh, I always use engine oil. And you just wanna coat them, you know, it doesn't have to be dripping all over the place, but you want the injector to be coated in oil to help when you put it in to seat it, make sure it doesn't catch on anything and cut. Because if it does, you're gonna have to pull it back out. Um, but as long as they're lubricated, I've never had an issue with them um, breaking when you go to seat them. You're gonna install your injector hold down clamp on before installing it because you can't stick it in um, when the injector is in the injector board. So you just slowly set it in and there you go. So it is seated, however, you have to install the bolt. So uh, new bolt, always use new bolts um, and you reuse the spacer. I lubricate the bolt threads and under the bolt head, just so when you go to torque it, it's not galling on anything. I always get it started by hand, a few threads. And then I zip them down with a gun that's, you know, not super powerful. You don't want to over torque that bolt. I always uh, zip it down and loosen it back up, then zip it down again just to, uh, to seat it. Because Cat wants you to torque it twice. So what I do is I seat it by running that bolt down, then I loosen it. So I've got my torque wrench here set to 40 foot-pounds. Um, you can set it anywhere 35 to 40, but I usually go 40. So we're going to torque it. All right, so it's torqued. Good to go. And then I always torque stripe it just to say, hey, this has been torqued. Uh, and while you have your rocker arms, not a bad idea to look at the cam lobes, which are sitting right on the left side of the cylinder head here to make sure there's no damage. So then you can install your injector connector. Uh, you, if the solenoid terminals have moved from the injectors, you can flip that connector around. It doesn't matter which way it's oriented. It just has to be seated over the terminal studs. And uh, you'll notice also that the uh, connectors are labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. So I zip them down and you torque these um, if you want, but they only torque to about 20 inch pounds. And I do not have a 20 inch pound uh, screwdriver type torque wrench. What I always do is I just run them in with this screwdriver setup. You can't really over torque them with that. Well, I guess you could, but I've done hundreds of them. Uh, unfortunately, that stupid coolant hose sits there, and that kind of makes doing number one a pain in the butt sometimes. But I wasn't going to drain the coolant just so I could run a connector nut down. I don't recommend tightening these with a ratchet because it's easy to over torque those. Um, you just want to use like the the palm style um, driver like that, um, or if you do have an inch pound torque wrench that goes down to 20 inch pounds, you can use that as well. So we are set up now to install our rocker arms again. So you grab them the same way like the crab claws and set them in place. You're going to make sure that your valve bridges have not moved. You want to make sure they're over each valve. Um, if if they have moved, make sure you do not run your rocker arms down if your valve bridges are off the seat because you can't get them back on. Also, if they're sitting out of the cup on the valves, it can damage the valve or the bridge, which is bad, obviously. So make sure your stud's tight and always make sure your spacer's in place or else you'll break that jake housing. So your jake housing's back on. Your stud's in place, your injector's installed. You are going to run these bolts down. You're going to go from the center tube first, and then the outer nut, and then the outer two bolts. And I always run them down with a, uh, you can use an electric impact, air ratchet. Um, I have this uh, hammerhead pneumatic right angle impact. So we're going to go inner first, kind of go back and forth. So inner one, so it's seated, other inner one. 
until it's seated back to the other one. And I always set it to a lower torque setting than it's going to be torqued to. So this is only, that gun only hits at about 30 foot pounds at the lower setting. So I did the inner ones, the nut, and now I'm doing the outer ones. And these are uh, 12 point half inch um, headed bolts, and then the outer nut is a 7 eighths, I believe. And uh, now depending on which model, you're, you're going to notice your Jake housing is different. Um, some have three bolt, or some have one bolt, three studs, with uh, two studs on the outer side, and then you have like two little three eighths head bolts holding down for your IVA housings. Doesn't matter, you'll figure it out. It's just you got to get the Jake housing off. Um, so now we're going to torque these. Uh, what I always do is it's basically anywhere from 75 to 80 foot pounds for these. Uh, these are half inch bolts, so I always set it to 75. See, I don't think it's going to pick up in the camera, but it's at 75. So we're going to torque it the same way we ran them down. So we're going to go inner, inner two. So that's torqued. And then we're going to go to the nut. Kind of a pain switching between sockets just for the one stud, but I didn't design this engine, remember? And uh, this engine's... These engines run forever. So we're going to torque that one and torque that one. And then I always go through and torque each one again, just to make sure they haven't loosened due to uh, one of the other ones taking off the stretch and the bolt. stud and then we're going to torque stripe everything so after you torque stripe all your bolts you're going to hook up your jake solenoid again which are just those two spade terminals on the newer motors they have a uh, connector um, obviously just if it's connector hook up the connector on these it's the spade terminals and also after everything's back in, um, it would be a good time to get an overhead ram. Um, if you are apprehensive or don't know how to do that, um, I'm not going to go over that in this video. It's a, it's a lot more technical than doing the injector itself. Um, you also need a special injector height tool that costs about 90 bucks. That there's, there's really no way around. You have to have that tool. Um, also, whatever injectors you changed, although it's not critical, um, you should get that that calibration file updated for the injector. It helps it run better. Um, that fine tunes the injector. So next time you're in the shop, um, if you're at a cat shop or a tap steel or whatever, uh, make sure you give them that number so they can program that injector. Put your valve covers back on and your intake, and you're good to go. Thank you.